to Ian. He's uh, Ian, uh, Managing Director of the RIA, uh, the Group Managing Director. Uh, a, a very warm welcome, and it's lovely to have you here. Over to you. Thank you, Leon. Um, what I thought I'd do today is just give you a brief um, overview of where we've been in RIA over the last few years, and a little bit of insight into what we're doing in the future. Um, I'm not, a, as Leon knows, I'm not a big fan of mission and vision statements because I think they tend to be overdone and people never remember them and they fall away in the filing cabinets forever. To convince me I was wrong, some of the staff came up with a nice simple one. It's one I actually really like um, and it defines exactly what we are. We're there to serve our members and uh, it's one we think even I can remember, therefore there's a fair chance the staff will remember the same. Um, I think it defines us really well. The strategic intent, some words in there to keep uh, work kind of happy and a few others, but the main thing there is we're about making our members safe, secure and mobile. And I'll touch on some of those as we go through. Uh, membership, we have 588,000 members. Um, slight decline last year, but after some good growth in the years before. But as you can see, it's reasonable to play over that sort of five-year period. Um, people say cars are more reliable, therefore you must do a lot less jobs now. It's definitely in decline. Um, we don't deny that, but last year we still did just shy of 400,000 roadside jobs for the 588,000 members. So it's still a service that gets used uh, regularly. We do roughly 1,500 to 1,700 jobs every day. Um, so it's still something that's in the market. What's interesting with that decline? Um, something most people don't know, but in a, as an economy declines or slows down, what happens is the number of cars on the road slow down. Therefore, you actually have less breakdowns, but you also have less accidents. So whilst this has been uh, interesting from a road service point of view, and probably part of the reason for the decline in membership last year, um, it's actually fantastic if you're an insurer because there's less car accidents, less, therefore less payouts. It's also very good if you happen to be the road safety minister because you can take all the credit for the decline in the uh, fatality rate, but the reality is it's just the economic uh, part of life and it'll bounce back as soon as the economy bounces back. One of the things we've been working on um, is moving from just being a motoring organisation to a mobility organisation. There we go, sorry. Um, so one of the reasons we moved to mobility is um, all the research we were doing was showing that yes, um, members are all drivers, but they also do lots of other things. And more and more of them um, are doing cycling. So you know, quite a lot of our members are those ones who like her on the weekends. Um, they use public transport. So the whole interaction of the car with all the other transport modes is something we're very interested in. A growing number of uh, moving into gophers. Uh, we sold just over 100 sold uh, gophers to our shops last year. So we're now the largest seller of uh, mobility scooters in South Australia. Traditional part of our business is advocating on behalf of our members, so we touch on obviously road and car safety. Um, the roads aren't good enough, we've been saying that for a long time. Um, but also, <coughs> this year we've looked at the graduate licence system, so unfortunately, all the indications we have are uh, the government will not be brave uh, and they won't do the things to improve driver safety, they'll do the things that are popular, so there'll be very few, if any, changes. Um, as a father of a 16-year-old daughter, I was very much hoping that they would increase the uh, age for fees to 18 and give me at least another year of um, not having sleepless nights, but unfortunately that's not likely to be the case. However, we do think they will bring in a couple of changes, particularly around uh, the passengers, the number of passengers the peak players are allowed to have, uh, particularly at night, which is then consistent with some of the other states. One of the things we've done 
this year uh, and the last 18 months actually is we've introduced Gold 50 events. So of the 588,000 members that we've got, 17,000 have been with us for 50 years or more. So these events are held um, usually about three or 400 guests at a time um, out in the community and it's to thank our Gold 50s for their um, 50 years of service with the RAA. And they've been very popular, and I'm sure there's no one in the room old enough to be a 50-year-old member. Uh, but if you are, hopefully, uh, if you haven't received an invite, we will shortly. It's going to take us three years to get around to all Gold 50 members. So it's a, a big group of people, and then we'll take a small breather and start again. So um, it's been very, very popular. Just over two years ago, um, our insurance business was... 50% uh, owned by us and 50% owned by Sun. And uh, we then completed the deal to buy back the two years on that, the other 50% under Leon's presidency just on two years ago. Part of that was we had to put in a new computer system because we were on Sun Corp's computer systems. So two years ago, we targeted a go live date on the 2nd of April this year. We went live on the 30th of April this year. and. Amazingly, we did it on budget. So it's the biggest project the RAA has ever done. Uh, and it was incredibly successful from the point of view of not only getting it in and on time, but also the, um, the way we structured it and the take up from our uh, start. A few teething problems, as you'd expect, with a, with a major new computer system. Um, and we're about to start the next phase of it, which is to put our membership onto the same system. So in about the next two years, we'll have not only insurance, but all our membership products on the same computer system, which just makes it easy for all our staff. Um, so at the moment, if you ring up and you ask a question about membership, and you want to ask a question about your insurance, they have to hit certain buttons to click over the different systems. This will mean they can see everything you've got with us all on my screen. So it'll make the service even easier for them to deliver it and hopefully simpler for you to experience. Uh, income. So this is looking a little bit into the future and some of our growth. As you can see there, um, the total group income is uh, already over 200 million um, from about 80 odd million a few years ago. Now obviously the one off kick in um, 2010 was when we bought the insurance business back. Um, but we're looking at growing around 7 to 7.5% 7 each year over the next sort of 10 years. Um, so it goes beyond that. Um, and it's really changing what we do as an organisation. From the point of view of net assets, um, again, huge growth from 2008 where we had net assets of just under 150 million to uh, this year of being nearly 350 million. And again, largely the result of purchasing the other part of the insurance business and restructuring some of our operations. From a club operating point of view, um, one of the things we were looking at when I took over was um, operating losses. So we were reliant upon investment income to sustain our operations and deliver member benefits. Uh, and of course in the last few years, investment returns have not been reliable. So we've restructured our operations and our aim is that our operations should pay for themselves. And investment income over the longer term should be there to deliver up new benefits and new services to members. A lot of our growth is obviously coming from the insurance company. Um, as you can see there, we're looking at nearly 10% growth per annum in our um, income from insurance. That's split almost evenly between the premium growth, so Insurance goes up every year, um, that's just the fact of life. Unfortunately, repair costs, and although the cars are getting more expensive, there's a lot more uh, technology in cars, so it costs more to repair them. Uh, but it's also about half of that is growth in the number of policies we sold. So we're experiencing a large increase in the number of members that now have members. What that allows us to do and what we're now looking at is utilising some of that income 
not to take some profit, but to return to members in the form of uh, extra discounts. So over the next two years, one of the um, advantages of having everything on one system is we'll actually introduce a reward for members uh, based on both the length of the time they've been with us, but also the number of products they've got with us, the discounts will increase. So we're looking at effectively returning some of the profit out of the insurance business back to the members as discounts of all the products that we sell. Um, and that'll include things such as our travel business, <laughs> Um, which again has had really good growth over the last few years. Um, we used to only have travel sold through the um, Adelaide office, which is now back at Highmarsh Square. Um, but we moved that out to all our branches so that it's closer to the people that are travelling. And that's delivered, as you can see there, a, a really good 33% growth for us over that period of time. Secure services, so we do um, home alarms and some uh, small business alarms. But what we've really grown into is we do a lot of aged care facilities now. So we're um, concentrating on that part of the market. Um, so we do not just the physical uh, building alarms, but we also do the pendants for uh, the personal alarms. So um, that's been a real growth area for us. And over the last uh, two years we've grown from about 8,000 miles of um, lines to just over 20,000 today. So the growth has come from uh, buying some small businesses and in that aged care facility, but also uh, our fellow club in Victoria moved their 7,500 miles over to us in uh, 30 June this year. One of the things we've changed over the last few years is what our shops look like. Um, we also moved, obviously, our high enough square shop back to its traditional location. Mm -hmm. One of the things we did when I first got there, our shops looked like bank branches of the old days, where two-thirds of the um, site was for back office. So we had some fantastic lunchrooms and uh, <laughs> lots of storage of stuff we never gave away. Um, but very little room for people to queue up out the front and no room for any retail. One of the things we've done is to completely turn that on its head. So at most of our sites now, about 70% of the land is uh, front office, so a lot of retail um, and a lot of products that we're selling to members and obviously a much smaller back office location. Um, had fantastic results for us. So at most of the locations we've moved, we're looking at something up around a 15% increase in sales through those locations. Not just the, uh, the retail products or shop products, but also membership and insurance have increased through those sites. But the standout's been High Marsh Square. So we moved about 20 metres now uh, back to the traditional site. Most people didn't realise we were only 20 metres around the corner before, and we've had nearly a 25% increase in sales through that location, just simply by going back to where people knew you were. So, um, that's been fantastic, and what it enables us to do, so whilst everyone else is closing down shops and branches and moving everyone to online or uh, call centres, we have a philosophy of, we offer you a range of uh, methods to deal with us and you pick your channel. And what the chart up there shows is, despite the fact that everyone says shop is dead, um, as you can see, between our district shops and our metro shops, they've been pretty stable. You know, so we've been growing business over those years, and as a percentage, they're pretty, pretty stable. So it's still a, a channel of choice for a lot of people. By having the retail items in the shops, the revenue from those enables us to fund those shops in the, in, in the main. So effectively, the retail operations fund themselves through the uh, retail products they sell in the shops, and allows us to keep those facilities there. Um, I guess web has been growing, um, and we've seen a little bit of decline in the call centre over time, but um, there's still a lot of people who go online, do all their research online, particularly true for insurance, who then ring us back and um, take the product out over the phone. So one of the advantages of that for us, um, the volume of calls hasn't dropped off, 
but the average call time and conversion rates for us uh, for sales through the call centres has increased quite dramatically. So again, a lot more efficient because a lot of people are doing their own research online, they're not asking questions over the phone. So hopefully that's given you a really quick overview of um, where the RA has come from and what we've been doing and uh, giving you a bit of understanding of our size and where we're going. Have you answered any questions? <laughs>
people that work in those types of environments, chefs and that sort of thing, want careers. RACB can offer them careers. So when we've looked at it, we would look at doing something probably in partnership with RACB. Uh, it is on our radar, but we probably have other priorities, partly because despite the financial success of the organisation, we still don't have that um, size yet to warrant the um, spend. So they, you know, RACB can merge with a golf club and put $80 million into building new accommodation. We, we couldn't do that. So we are looking, but we're probably looking in partnership with them. So one of the problems uh, I see, my mother lost two cars written off because some uninsured person ran into them while they were parked and smash them all up. Now, uh, what are you people doing to force the government to force with their registration payment some sort of third party property theft insurance so that I uh, say my mother could have reclaimed to get her car paid without losing her no claim bonus? Um, she should have lost her no claim bonus. Um, those usually don't go with that. They're, they've changed their more a rating for life type thing now. In terms of the compulsory um, sort of third party insurance with registration, um, all the research shows that doesn't work. So, in fact, those people that drove into your mother's car probably aren't registered. The CTP fund, so the Motor Accident Commission, about 20 to 25% of all claims are from unregistered, uninsured cars. There are 5%, I understand, uninsured, unregistered cars. It's, it's probably a bit less than that, but it's a big number. And so putting it into the registration is only going to make registration more expensive and less likely for people to register. So it's a, a difficult issue. Um, one of the things we think can work is having increased random um, inspections from a uh, vehicle safety point of view, um, so defect stations. The reason it works is if you look at the socio-economic outlay line of Adelaide, where those sort of unregisterable cars or defectable cars are happen to be the ones that also don't register. So you actually catch two things in the same net. Um, so that's one of the things we encourage the police. They, however, can't get funded for the same. It's a, it is a big issue, but from an insurance point of view, it's not something that, from our point of view, we pay out on those claims. We have a huge backlog then of uh, trying to collect the monies off the uninsured. So. Thank you very much. Ian, uh, didn't realise it was such a big business. May I ask uh, very quickly two questions, please? What, what is the subscription to RAA? And, and the reason I'm not a member, having been a long, very long and loyal member, is because when I buy a new car these days, they give me roadside assistance. Is that a threat? It seems to be growing to even, we're seeing Toyota and Miss Sander offering these sorts of schemes. Does RAA see that as a threat? Uh, I'll take the first one first. Um, standard membership's $87. Uh, the top cover, which is premium, is about $150. Thank you. Um, the threat of new car sales, no, because if you buy most brands, we actually deliver the service. And we're actually working with them to substitute their current offering for actually an RAA membership. And it's, it's a national project, all the moment clubs are working together. So, um, yes, it could have been a threat, but we actually cooperated as a group of clubs around the country. And other than the large German banks, although we do do Volkswagen, the other prestige ones, um, and yes, we don't do those, but we do most of the others. Toyota have always stayed out um, on the basis they sell on their quality and their reliability, so if you want to be a member of the club, it's up to you. Thank you. Mine is a question, but really a comment. Um, over the last two weeks, our club's supported a program called uh, Road Free Sponsoring Youth Driver Awareness. It's a fabulous program and we had, uh, uh, two weeks ago, we had 90 
kids from uh, girls from Ross Trevor, uh, from Loretta, who had last week 150 boys from Ross Trevor College. Uh, it's a fabulous program. It's a six-segment program. One of those segments is about wheels. It's all about the cars. And the person that, that support that promotes that and, and presents that uh, particular segment of the program is a person from the RAA, which you people provide, and we thank you very much. He does a fantastic job. Thank you. giving us an overview of, uh, of RAA and uh, of where we are today and where we're going in the future. And uh, I'm sure you can all see that it's in pretty good hands. So Ian, thank you very much.